morning. We've gathered to worship the Lord, and the Revelation song says, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy, holy. Let's stand together as we sing this. Thank you. 
that just as you are holy your people we are to be holy so God I pray that we would take this opportunity as we've gathered together this morning to look at our hearts and to make sure that our thoughts and our ways and our purposes are adjusting to you to what you're wanting to do in our lives in our families in our community Lord Jesus we understand that we come to your throne a throne of grace this morning in boldness because of what Jesus Christ sacrificially did for us on the cross we thank you God for dying on for us we thank you for the abundant life that we have now we thank you for the forgiveness of sin we thank you Lord Jesus for the hope of heaven and we just want to honor you this morning together with our lips we want to honor you with right motivations. We want to honor you by the way that we live our lives. So, Lord, speak to us today. And we stand against the enemy and all of his schemes of distraction. We pray that the Holy Spirit would not be grieved or quenched in any way, but that, God, we would truly encounter you spiritually, emotionally, physically as we worship together today. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you. you. may be seated. It's good to see you on this Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day, ladies. And we have something uh, real special a little bit late in the service. I do want to uh, take a moment now to highlight a few of the uh, announcements that are on your worship guide. We have a mother-daughter tea party. Uh, this coming Saturday, May the 15th, from 3 o'clock until 4, 4 o'clock, uh, please contact the office or Caitlin and be sure and make your uh, reservation for that by tomorrow afternoon. You will see, you remember this time last year because of the virus that we were meeting outdoors when we started back. We had about three services 
outside during the month of May. Fortunately, didn't have weather like we're having today. And I've had several of you say, I wish we could do that again. So we're going to do that on Memorial Day weekend. The only, th only activities that are going to be happening on our campus on that morning is that we'll meet out at the lot. That's over by the bus barn. And we will worship together outside. You bring your lawn chair. And then we're going to have a picnic after the service together. The church will provide the meat and the drinks, and you're just invited to bring a side dish uh, vegetable or casserole or dessert or something like that. And we'll have a wonderful time of worship together outside and then uh, eat together. And, of course, that's weather permitting, and we'll have a backup plan if the weather doesn't cooperate with us. But we're going to have a wonderful time doing that together. You'll see that right after that, uh, school will be out. It'll be time for Vacation Bible School. So we'll be starting June 6th. They'll go through June 9th, 6 to 8, 15 p.m. every night. Again, meet back on the lot is uh, where we'll start uh, with our activities. So you be sure, and, and any, any child that you can think of in your neighborhood, you know, that, that any child that you know, be sure and invite them to participate. How many children have come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, especially if they're not engaged in a church family during vacation Bible school? It's your opportunity to shine the light of Jesus. So please help us to invite all the kids that we possibly can. Then we have our camps. Our third through sixth grade will be involved in the Power Plus preteen camp June 27th through 30th in Woodlake, Texas at the Piney Woods Camp. And then our students will be involved in the Gateway Student Conference over in the Dallas-Fort Worth area July 14th through 16th. So you want to be sure and mark all of that on your calendar and uh, be prepared for that as it comes. How you doing this morning? Boy, you are, aren't you? You are fired up this morning. It's good to see all of you. And I know there's some guests here with us today. We're honored to have you with us. All we ask from you when the offering plate comes by is we'd love to have your mailing address or your email address so that we can let you know about future events. I promise you we do not show up on doorsteps unannounced. And uh, so I want to give you opportunity to say hi to the folks around you. So look around you and say hi. Shout across the aisles. Be as charismatic, you know, shouting Baptist. Okay, say hi to everyone, and then we'll continue our worship together. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in the darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. the goodness of God. In all my life you have been faithful. In all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing. 
the goodness of God. Yeah, your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. I worship you. 
thank you for this day we thank you for the many blessings that we have many that we don't even think about lord and lord i just ask that you will be with each person here today especially today lord be with the mothers and bless them and lord we know that sometimes this is a rough day for some folks and we ask that you'll give them peace lord and lord i just come to you now and I do thank you for the church we have here and thank you for our leadership Lord and I just ask that you will guide and direct and help us to do your will and be with brother Mike as he leads and be with the rest of our staff as they support and Lord I just ask that you will help each one of us as Christians do your will each day Lord, I just ask now again that you will bless us and be with us. And Lord, take this offering and use it for your good. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Mother's Day, ladies. And uh, I'm going to ask, I have a very loose definition of motherhood, by the way. Uh, if you Obviously, if you've biologically had a baby, that makes you a mother. But you may not have done that. But I'm, I know I have lots of people in my life that have adopted me as their son that never had any children. So I want all the moms, you, you claim to be a mom today, I want to ask you to stand up, please, and we want to honor and appreciate you first by <laughs> clapping, and then our children are going to come, and they're going to give you a chocolate rose, okay? So come on, kids, come on and, and uh, pass out the roses to our moms, okay? You pray with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for these outstanding ladies that are standing right here. Thank you for their unconditional love, their tremendous uh, support of their families, Lord. Thank you for the way that you have used them to nurture their families, Lord. Thank you for their tireless efforts from long before the sun is up to long after the sun is down in taking care of uh, their husbands and their children, God. Thank you, Lord, for the supernatural strength that you give them to face the task of the day and the perseverance that you give them when they walk through difficult times. And Lord, I just pray that they will feel lifted up and appreciated today. God, I pray that they would be able to rest in you today. I pray that they would see their blessings that are all around them and God, that you will continue to use them in a marvelous way with their families in this community. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you for our moms. In your name I pray, amen. How about expressing appreciation to our moms one more time? Today we honor and give honor where honor is due. Did you know that as a nation we've been celebrating this holiday for 107 years. A lady by the name of Anna Jarvis in 1908 approached her pastor and said, can we have a Sunday where we show appreciation for our moms? The very next year, May the 10th, 1909, in Anna Jarvis's church, they gave every mom a white carnation 
because that was Mrs. Jarvis's favorite flower. That idea took off and exploded and went all over our nation so that by 1914, on May the 10th, President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed that every second Sunday from now on would be considered Mother's Day and that we are to take this day and to give honor where honor is due and uh, give appreciation to our moms. So today, we carry on that tradition. In order to do that, I was trying to think about how I wanted to, to give honor and respect to all of our ladies. And I couldn't help but think of this passage in Proverbs chapter 31. So I'm going to ask you if you would to stand again for me. I've got you standing a lot today. As we read God's Word, Proverbs 31, beginning with verse 10. A wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her, lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the staff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Pray with me, Lord Jesus, help us to understand these words. May the ladies in this room come to understand the appreciation that all of us have for them in their love and devotion. In your name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. This is the picture <clears throat> of the ideal mom. Now, ladies, don't let the enemy take this passage and condemn you. There are no perfect moms out there. Reminds me of the cows that were grazing in the field, and they saw a local dairy farm truck pass by. And on the side of the truck, it had the picture of cows, and it talked about the milk that was to be carried in that truck. And it said it was pasteurized, homogenized, sanitized, and vitamin and rich. One cow said to the other, it makes you feel inadequate, doesn't it? <laughs> this is no time to feel inadequate. What we want to do is to always reach for the ideal and to never settle for mediocrity. Proverbs 31 is an acrostic. It takes each letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's like a poem, and it is a tribute to our awesome moms. Notice with me, first off, number one, Notice her great worth. It says that she's compared to a ruby. The beauty of a ruby comes from the inside out. It shines from the inside out. 
So a mom, a wife, is a woman of inward beauty. It says in Proverbs 31.30, Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Now I can appreciate a beautiful woman. I married the most beautiful woman on the earth. But too many men stop there. And when they do, they find themselves in some type of fatal attraction. Beauty on the outside, but evil on the inside. Virtue must always exceed beauty. The actual language in this passage is moral strength. And it's because of this that you can trust your wife. It is because of this that you can trust your mom. Young ladies in this room who are not married, I can help you if you will listen. Outer beauty is great, but if the man that you uh, are, are interested in is only interested in your outer beauty then he does not understand, and he is not worth it. You see, God created men and women to be different. Women are to play hard to get. I'm looking at some ladies in this room that are very good at that. Your yes means no, and your no means yes, and he better be able to figure out which you mean. If you understand that, and the man is supposed to be the one that pursues the woman. And, and, and ladies, you're supposed to tease him and test him to see if he really loves you. Notice how Jacob loved Rachel in Genesis 29. It says Jacob was in love with Rachel and said, I'll work for you seven years in return for your younger daughter Rachel. Laban said, that's her dad, it is better that I give her to you than to some other man stay here with me. So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel, but that seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. If only young women today would understand the power that they have over a man. And to use that, you know, if, if, if he wants you to uh, succumb to temptation, then, then he doesn't really love you. Men are to chase women, and women are to play hard to get. And guys, if a man chases you, that's the job of a prostitute. Run! You know? Get away as fast as you can. And as a matter of fact, even after the wedding, isn't that what a good marriage... I'm looking at some folks that have been married for a long time. Isn't that what a good marriage is about? The wife continues to play hard to get. The husband does the chasing. This develops the inner beauty and it builds trust in a relationship. You can trust a woman of noble character. She is honest. She is wise. She is loyal. She is prudent. You can trust her with your bank account. You can trust her with your life. She doesn't run away from you and she doesn't run around on you. She wants to be beautiful for her man. On the inside, shining into the outside, she radiates with that beautiful from the inside out. The second thing that I want you to see in this scripture is I want you to see her good works. Being a wife or a mom, ladies you know, is not about being just glamorous. It's not about laying around the swimming pool eating bonbons. As a matter of fact, this lady in Proverbs 31, convenience is not her highest priority. She is a wise shopper. She is a nutritionist. 
She goes the extra mile for her family. You know, some moms are privileged to not have a job outside the home. Other moms, like my wife, have a job outside the home. And so the question that I have is, how do you do all that you do? And men, we need to appreciate our spouses for all they do in our households and the callings that they have in their life. The other thing that I want you to see in this scripture is I want you to notice her godly worship. It says in Proverbs 31, 15, She rises also while it is still night and gives food to her household and assigns tasks to her maids. The Bible says here in Proverbs 31, 30, Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. This is a lady who has a quiet time in the morning. All my married life, Amy has got up very early in the morning. She listens to uh, the Word of God. She listens to her favorite Bible teacher while putting on her makeup, while getting ready. She spends time with her Lord so that she has supernatural energy to take care of high-maintenance me and our children and our family and then do the work that she is called to do. The fourth thing that I want you to see in this passage is I want you to notice her genuine wisdom. It says in verse 16 in our text and following, she considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable, and her lamp does not go out at night. She's an outstanding businesswoman. She knows how to make wise investments. She uses her gifts and her talents to bless her family. My bride, she's called to be a music teacher and a worship leader. That is a great compliment to the call that God has on our family. It's who we are. It completes us. It's not a competition with our family. But any time that a wife or a husband has a job that competes with the family, it is contrary to the Spirit of God. And we should always evaluate it and reconsider it. This woman in Proverbs 31, she understands economics. She knows how to stretch a dollar. I, I can just remember as a child, you know, when I was young, grocery stores didn't match coupons. My mother was a couponer, and she would have her coupons organized, and when she went grocery shopping, we hit four grocery stores, all because we were a middle-class family, lower middle-class family, and my mom needed to take a small amount of money and make it go a very long way. And she worked very hard at doing that, and I can remember my dad praising her and thanking her for all the time that she spent to make sure that we could live on the income that the Lord had provided. <coughs> Excuse me. Awesome wives or mothers burn the midnight oil. They're not idle and gossip. They have genuine wisdom. They have financial wisdom. And notice also, number five on your outline, notice her generous welfare says in verse 19, In her hand she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. What's a spindle? Well, it's where you make thread. And, and, and so the emphasis here is not that she just takes care of her family, but she also looks out for those in the community who are in need, and she makes sure that they are taken care of as well. 
She, she helps the poor. She's a, she's a philanthropist. I can't even say the word today. I'm not even going to try again. I'm so tongue-tied today. She doesn't just look out for her family, but she looks out for the other families in her community. Notice number six, her godly, like my word here, I needed a W word, wife-ship. Verse 23 and following, her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. When a man has a good wife and a good mother to his children, she's an asset. She's not a liability. She completes him. She enhances his life. The city gate in this scripture is where business is transacted. It's, it's, it's like the town square here in Gilmer. Her husband is well known because of the work that he does. Now I know why you keep me around here. It's because of Amy. I appreciate that. I was smart, smart enough to marry her. Men that are who they are, it is because of their wives. Have you ever heard this? Behind every good man is a good woman and a surprised mother-in-law. It's the truth. Verse 25 in our text. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She's content. She's dignified. She's a lady. You're aware of her presence when she comes into the room. And then number seven on our outline. Notice her gracious words. Verse 26 and 27, she opens her mouth in skillful and godly wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue, giving counsel and instruction. She looks well to how things go in her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. She's a lady that controls her tongue. She speaks only wisdom and kindness. Why? Why isn't she yelling at her kids? Why isn't she griping at her husband? Because she spent that time early in the morning, in the Word, and in prayer. And she is at peace with her God. So then, number eight, notice her glowing witness. Verse 28 and following. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also. He praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Her children brag on her. Her husband honors her. I like this verse. 3 John 4. It says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Isn't that our prayer for our kids? No greater reward for a mom on Mother's Day than to know that her kids Love the Lord, love His Word, love His church, love the community, and they let the light of Jesus shine through them. This is the kind of wife and mom that you should want to be. The kind of wife and moms that we want in our life. A witness to our children. A witness to our community. You know what this world needs? Good, old, 
old-fashioned homes. Dad leads the home. Mom nurtures the home. Children respect the parents. Sons are taught to respect authority, to be responsible, to earn a fair living. And when he loves a girl, he approaches that girl's dad and asks for permission to spend the rest of his life with that girl. Daughters that are taught to respect authority, to respect her parents, and to honor her husband's parents, and to appreciate people, and to be grateful for all that they do for her. And they get married and they cleave to each other, and they leave their parents, and they become one in Jesus Christ. We must not fall for the counterfeits. They don't work. You know, someone comes and they share with me their situation that they're in, and so often I just ask, How's that working out for you? Well, it's not working out too good, or they probably wouldn't be coming to talk to me. But the truth is, this book is true. And when you live by it, there's no regrets. There's nothing but love, joy, and peace. Thank you, Mom for showing us how to love God. Thank you, Mom, for showing us how to love the Word. Thank you, Mom, for showing us how to respect each other and to give unconditional love to each other. Thank you for being a beautiful woman of virtue, a woman who shines from the inside out, just like a ruby. You deserve our respect and our admiration and our praise today. And we honor you and we thank you. Pray with me, Lord Jesus. We are so thankful for moms who honor you, who take this role sincerely who work tirelessly make sure that the needs of their family are met who want all of their children and their to be saved and to have a personal relationship with you and to be people that don't just talk the talk but walk the walk who love your word and want to live by it Thank you for ladies who give the kind of spiritual nurturing in their homes that allow children to come to know a Savior and to receive forgiveness for sin, past, present, and future. God, I pray if there's any person in this room that is indifferent to you in any way, whether it be bitterness, whether they are lost, whether they are just not serious enough about your word and about your church, I pray for a spirit of conviction on us, Lord, to do our very best to live our lives, to thank you for our salvation. Wow, what grace and mercy you have shown us. May we have the desire to honor you. And may we see how we can bless our children by doing just that. Help us to respond to your gospel today. In your name I pray.
Amen. We're going to stand together. We're going to sing. We're going to worship. This altar is open for prayer. This church is open for membership. If you'd like to know about salvation or baptism, now is the time. Let's worship together. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that